good morning guys, Tush coming at you. Sunday, March 29th, just coming up to 10.30 in the morning. And we're back out in the garage, temporarily at least. We're uh, just uh, gearing up to go out to the garden shed to uh, find the engine stand so I can get the engine up on, uh, on the stand so we can have a, a quick inspection of it before we get into uh, scrubbing it down and getting it ready for paint. Um, there's also a few other things I want to try to find out there. I've got another set of, uh, I think I've got a set of brake rotors out there I want to have a look at, see if they're uh, better than the ones that are on the 59 uh, currently. And I definitely want to try to find, uh, I've got another set of brake calipers actually that were off the 60 that I have. Um, I think I have those in the shed, as I'd mentioned in a previous video. I want to sh swap the calipers that I've got from my 60 onto the 59 um, because they're more correct for the 59 than they are for the 60. So we're going to try to find those in the shed. So yeah, it's going to be a bit of an expedition this morning. The shed is full of crap and uh, it's cold out there this morning. It's minus one still, but uh, definitely warmer than yesterday and it's supposed to be a little bit warmer this afternoon, but I can't uh, wait around to do that because I've got less uh, my neighbor Les coming around uh, noon today and we're going to go have a look at his car in the paint shop. So uh, we'll try to get a, a few things done before uh, Les shows up. So that's about it for now guys. Uh, we'll bring you back when I make some progress and find the stuff that I'm looking for. Alright guys. Alright, here's the garden shed. Not really much garden stuff in here. Mostly car parts. So we got to dig through that. And uh, not sure where the engine stand in. It's probably over in this corner somewhere. There's my TR250 fenders. Anyway, we'll uh, start emptying this out and uh, we'll try to find what we're looking for. It, uh, it's a bit of a daunting task. I gotta get this organized a lot better at some point. I'm always going in here and digging for stuff. Anyway, we'll be back. Alright guys, survived the ordeal of uh, going into the garden shed. It took me uh, an hour and a half to go through that. So uh, I did find a few things. I did find uh, a spare transmission tunnel cover um, that I may be able to use to fix the uh, flange on the bottom of this one. It's totally rusted away. So I've got the one from a 60 here that hasn't gone on the car yet. I've got the 59 and this one's from a 60 as well. So we may be able to rescue the flange off the bottom of that. So that's a good thing. I found uh, the radiator from one of my parts cars that has an electric fan on it. So I may be able to use that fan, although I think it may block the crank hole. So I'll have to decide whether I want to go with a fan or block the crank hole. Uh, I guess I could always retrofit the fan if need be if the car runs hot, but uh, we'll think about that. We do have an electric fan on the 60, so we may want to fit that on there. I did find my engine stand, parts of it over here, and I got some parts of it over here. Uh, I pulled out a steering rack from a TR6. I don't know if you remember that uh, my buddy Stan is uh, doing an old Thames van and he's looking for a steering rack. So I thought I would dig that out while I saw it and uh, just give him a quick measurement. Who knows, that could actually work for his project. So I thought I would pull that out. And I found uh, the brake calipers that I was looking for that go on the 60. A uh, couple of uh, tie rod ends uh, for the steering. Uh, that's a front body mount. Uh, that I'm probably going to need because the other ones are pretty well rusted. I don't have the uh, left hand side, that's the right hand side. I'll have to probably fabricate the left hand side. Some Coney Shock uh, parts and some uh, dummy spark plugs are plugs that I can put in the engine block when I go to paint it. So that's a good uh, little score out of the shed for this morning. Uh, anyway, we're going to go in and uh, get ready to go up to Les's and uh, we'll be back out here that, this afternoon. Hopefully, it won't take too long. I told you how miserable I was this morning working out in the cold and in the garden shed. Well, now I'm stuck in a truck with Les for uh, probably the next hour or so to go and look at his car. So this is real torture. Yeah. Side, 
right, guys, quick update for you. Just uh, coming up to 10 to 4, and we're back from uh, Les's uh, body shop. So uh, we've got the uh, engine hoist out. We've got the engine here just uh, sitting on the uh, moving dolly. We've got the engine stand assembled. So I think we're ready to go ahead and uh, lift this baby up. And then we'll take the clutch off, and uh, we'll go from there. So I just wanted to give you a quick shot of that before we move it on to that. All right, guys. Hey, back. guys. Tush coming back at you. It's now Monday, March 30th. And uh, as you can see, we didn't get much accomplished yesterday. The uh, engine's still sort of hanging off the stand or sitting on the, on the ground on a moving dolly. You can see we've got the uh, nose piece of the engine stand sort of semi-affixed to the uh, engine block. Let me just turn that down for a sec. I stopped yesterday because um, I wanted to get some uh, grade 8 fasteners to attach this block. Uh, to the stand so uh, the bolts I had were a little bit too short they weren't getting enough uh, thread uh, for my liking so uh, I went and picked up a few more uh, longer grade 8 bolts so uh, that'll give me a little bit more peace of mind when I attach this to the stand so we're gonna do that we'll uh, get that uh, finished uh, bolted up and then we'll uh, hook it up to the stand and uh, we'll go on from there all right, guys. All right, guys. We've got the big uh, 1959 TR3A power plant up on the uh, engine stand, and we're just uh, taking a quick look for uh, some before and after shots. So uh, here's what it looks like before. Pretty greasy and grimy. I'm going to be careful here because I've noticed that uh, on a few blocks I've done, there's actually uh, some printing from the factory that I like to uh, to keep, and you can sort of see it peeking through here. Um, usually it says TR3 in red paint and I assume I think uh, from what I read that was to uh, help the workers in the plants identify the blocks for the TR3s versus other cars that were in production at the time. So I'm going to be careful when I when I clean that because I'd like to keep that paint if possible. I think that's kind of cool. So uh, yeah, so there's uh, that side and this side's got a lot of dirt and grime on it too. Let me get out of the light. So there's the original uh, canister style oil filter. I think we're going to swap that out for a, a spin-on adapter. And uh, there's the uh, original road draft tube, they called it. So you probably can't see that either. So that used to dump oil out right onto the roadway. So we'll probably take the water pump off and have a look. We'll take the uh, water pump pulley off to paint it. The crank pulley will uh, take off. Timing chain cover will take off. Have a look at the timing chain, see how much stretch we got. And uh, we'll just generally get everything a good uh, clean up. We're not going to take the head off, um, for now anyway. But we'll uh, flip it over and we're going to take the oil pan off and we'll uh, check the bottom end and uh, give it a bit of a clean up. I'm sure there's lots of sludge in the bottom of the oil pan. So we'll get that cleaned up nicely. So that's it. Just want to give you a before and we'll bring you back for the after maybe in a few days yeah so we're going with the uh, duplicolor engine enamel in gloss black I had a choice of uh, flat black or gloss black so we're going with the gloss black hopefully that'll be okay and I've got the uh, exhaust over here the exhaust manifold just sort of sitting in my uh, my workbench and we're gonna go with a uh, cast iron gray high heat for that from VHT so hopefully that'll look okay so that'll have to go in the blaster at some point anyway that's it guys we'll come back later on all right I guess it's uh, good to know that I got the right block in my car so there she is after 56 years TR3 the R needs a little work, but uh, yeah, just thought I'd give you a quick shot of that. I couldn't resist uh, trying to get some of the dirt off the side of that to show you what I was talking about. So there you go. So uh, we'll try to recreate that when we, we paint the engine. We'll, uh, I don't think we'll be able to save the original uh, paint because I've got to paint this side of the block. It's pretty nasty. So we've got some red paint and we'll just uh, keep note of that font. We'll maybe do a quick tracing of it and then we'll uh, paint it back on when we're done. All right, guys. Hey, guys, just a quick update. I've been working on it for a couple hours. If you've uh, got stock and paper towels, you're going to have a good month. Anyway, uh, 
yeah, it's getting there. It's uh, really heavy, stuck on grease. And uh, it's taken a lot of effort to get it off. It's probably the greasiest motor that I've ever worked on. And we've got the road draft tube off. We've got the uh, oil filter off. There's the road draft tube. There's the oil filter down there. Uh, got to stick the distributor pedestal off still. Um, right now I'm working on um, pulling that crank pulley and we'll get the timing chain cover off. We'll take the water pump off and uh, then we'll continue doing some more cleaning. But I just wanted to stop and give you a quick look of where we're at. This side's not too bad. So uh, what we plan on doing tonight is uh, once I get those other components off, I think we'll flip it over and we'll uh, take the oil pan off. It's getting clean enough to get the pan off anyway and have a look. Anyway, we'll continue cleaning, but I just wanted to give you a shot of the progress so far. All right, all right guys, guys, just another quick update for you. Uh, first of all, if anybody interested, there's the, uh, the engine number, TS45625E. So I'll have to bring out my uh, heritage certificate and see if that matches. Not that it really matters, but it's always nice to have the uh, correct engine in the car. It's less important for a Triumphs versus something like a muscle car where everything's got to be number matching. So anyway, we'll check that, but uh, things are moving along. I've got the uh, water pump off and the uh, timing chain cover off now. So everything's looking pretty good in there. It's looking pretty clean, not a lot of wear, even on the, uh, the tensioner. Uh, usually uh, quite a bit of grooves, and this is not bad actually. So yeah, so that's looking pretty good. doesn't look like the, the chain is stretched too much. I should have got a new uh, seal for the uh, timing cover. Um, I'll have to order one of those, so we'll be waiting to put the, uh, the timing cover back on, but uh, we've got a lot of work to do before that point anyway. I think Les is going to come over and uh, wants to observe me taking the oil pan off tonight, so uh, we'll probably get ready for Les to visit uh, later on tonight, and we'll flip that over and take the pan off. All right, guys. All right, guys, she's looking better. Obviously, the, uh, the TR3 is gone. I did take a stencil of that, so uh, I've got that to be able to put it back on the engine block after. So it's about the fourth hour I've been working on cleaning this, uh, if you can believe that. I've used pretty much everything in my arsenal. I've used uh, engine degreaser, brake cleaner, uh, oven cleaner, uh, Windex to clean up uh, residue. I used uh, some Marine Clean, uh, Pour 15 Marine Clean, which works quite well. And I've used a steamer, handheld steamer. So uh, yeah, we're running the gamut of uh, products and uh, it's come up a lot better. It's getting to the point where I can actually probably start sanding it soon. Uh, most of the grease is off of it, but there's still some remnants here and there that I'll have to get off. But it's definitely looking better. Uh, like I said, it's been a long, a long road. I still need to bring that, uh, take that tower off, but uh, that's looking better. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd give you a quick shot of that. I know it's not uh, too exciting this video, but uh, thought you'd want to see the steps along the way. And it's taken away a long time to get to this point, so uh, anyway, we'll uh, shut this off and we'll bring it back once I get some more action. All right, guys, last update of the night. And before we go in and upload this, so I've got the pan off. Obviously, the motor's upside down. And we've got the pan down here, and I'm happy to say that I'm really happy with what I see. Uh, not a lot of sludge, not any metal in the bottom of the pan, which is great. Internally, the if I take a look at the cam, the cam looks really good. I don't know if you're going to be able to see any of that, but the cam looks good. The uh, cylinder bores look really good. Everything looks really good in here. The oil pump, even there's no metal in the uh, pickup for the oil pump, so that looks good. So, yeah, it looks like a really nice, clean uh, motor. So, all we're going to do, basically, is uh, we're going to clean out the, uh, the sump and uh, just get that little bit of sludge out of there and then uh, new gasket and uh, we'll button it back up and when we'll get it painted so that's good news so we'll uh, get back out here tomorrow night and we'll continue on all right guys have a good night